Uh, so yeah, so there's actually like a ton to talk about with this deck because I haven't played this deck before. I did look at like other people's lists. Like I looked at, oh, what's that guy's name? Like AJT BLS or something. I looked at his list. Um, had some ideas. One, one thing that I want to talk about, I think the Bears mentioning the go format is as far as I know, I know like someone will correct me and tell me that I'm wrong. But as far as I know, there are only two combos in GOAT format that are two card combos that deal 8,000 plus damage. One of them is Cyberstein plus Megamorph, right? Because you just get a Master Vaz, Megamorph your guy, and that's like, I don't know, that's like more than 9,000. Ha ha ha. Um, and then the second two card combo that does more than 8,000 damage is Rescue Cat plus Last Will. Um, Premature Burial, of course, can also be used instead of last will so i'm thinking like okay there are two two card combos in goat format that, that deal more than eight thousand damage and yet like no one is playing either one so i don't know i think there's something to both those there um the nice thing about rescue cat of course is like unlike cyberstein plus megamorph like that can be blocked by scapegoat whereas with rescue cat we play panda so like you know they can scapegoat all they want it's not going to make any difference uh, so yeah, so let's let's talk about some choices. Um, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about like how I how I build these kinds of decks in general, how I approach the deck building process. When I start out like building a new deck, oftentimes I usually try to play like as many synergies as possible. Thanks, Steven. I I try to play as many synergies as possible, and the reason why is because. You know, if I'm playing maybe, like, I don't know, four different, like, synergies in my deck, probably some of those synergies are going to be good and some won't be good, but the only way to figure out which are the good synergies and which are the bad synergies is to try them all and then just sort of cut one and lean more into the others. So that's, like, kind of what I'm doing here a bit. Um, So for for Rescue Cat, uh, we, we, got, we got some good targets here. Uh, Milus Radiant, that, you know, pumps all your Earth guys, and you'll see that in this deck there actually is, like, a lot more stuff that we can do with this than kind of in the standard Rescue Cat deck. We have Fire Panda, as I said, Anti-Scapegoat, very good card, um, in general. Some people even play this card without Rescue Cat. And then I was a little torn on what to make as, like, the, the third Rescue Cat target. I decided to go with Wicked Worm Beast. And, you know, again, I might change this. After I'm done playing my games, I'll probably go back and make changes. But the reason that I decided to go with Wicked Worm Beast over Death Wombat is because, um, well, a few reasons. If our opponent, like, sets a back row and passes turn one, and we, like, just have Rescue Cat and want to just summon Rescue Cat and attack for some damage, usually you want to get two Wicked Worm Beasts, right? Um... You can return them to your hand, and if you, like, open something like Rescue Cat plus Graceful, going Rescue Cat, get two Worm Beasts, attack for 28, return them to your hand, Graceful next turn is pretty strong. Um, obviously, there are, um, there are some other things, uh, that, that make Wicked Worm Beast good. Uh, one is, I don't know, just the fact that, like, if you're up against a deck, like, monarchs or something like they can't bring control it if you're up against a deck that plays creature swap they can't take it with creature swap or take it with snatch deal so i don't know we'll see the one matchup where i really like death wombat better than wicked worm beast um is well i mean burn obviously but that wasn't what i i am referring to is warriors and that's because like having 1600 attack instead of 1400 is a really big deal against warriors uh because you can attack over donzalug and also because if they go, like, I don't know, something like Blade Knight set four back rows go, going, like, Giant Trunade into Rescue Cat into, like, Death Wombat plus Wicked Worm Beast is kind of optimal because the Wombat crashes with the Blade Knight and then the Worm Beast hits directly and goes to your hand at the end of the turn. So I was even considering just doing, like, 1-1, one, one, um, doing 1-1-Bat, one, 1-Worm one one Beast. Um... And then, I mean, Sagan, that, that's pretty obvious, gets Rescue Cat. Uh, Cyberstein, I've seen some Rescue Cat decks play this as a one-of before. Uh, I want to try it, because again, it's like I just kind of want to see what works. 
Um, thank you indoors for subscribing. I I really appreciate it. Um, so what was I gonna say? Ah, Cyberside. So one of the things that we can do with this deck is well, there's a few things. One, if we have, like, Rescue Cat Last Will, but we've, like, somehow drawn into all of our beasts, or not all of them, but if we've drawn into a lot of our good Rescue Cat targets, and we happen to have more than 5,000 life, just going Rescue Cat Last Will, Last Will gets Cyberstein, that's, like, I don't know, it's, like, it's a lot, it's, like, 8,800 or something, because the Rescue Cat gets two Milus Radiance, Cyberstein gets Master of Oz, and then the Milus Radiance pump the Master of Oz, and, and you swing for game. Um, and in certain matchups like Reasoning Gate, um, just going like Cyberstein for Last Warrior is sometimes like that enough is good enough to win you the game. So having like this Stein that's searchable by a Sangin and three Last Wills, to me it seems worth it as a one of. Um, these other monsters are pretty unusual. Uh, well, I mean, Exiled Force isn't, but I'll get into that in a, in a sec. Yeah, um,. Thanks, indoors. Um, Matt, Ojometry is it is it three as far as I know, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, so Cannon Soldier is also an interesting choice. So one thing that I was thinking about is obviously like Last Will is kind of like one of the key cards in our deck, and uh, we want like ways to trigger it. Exiled Force is, like, really strong in our deck for that reason. Just, hey, it pops a monster and it allows us to trigger our Last Will. Um, but obviously, Cannon Soldier can also trigger Last Will. I mean, uh, Magical Scientist decks used to do that way back in the day. Just play Cannon Soldier to trigger Last Will. Um, here, Cannon Soldier also has synergy because we run Scapegoat, which I'll get into. So, to me, I figure it's like, okay, our Cannon Soldier has synergy with three Last Wills and two Scapegoats. To me, that's, like, enough synergy. Um, and obviously, like, sometimes later on in the game, sometimes your rescue cat combo will be, like, a little short of game, like, 500 or 1,000 short. So just have Cannon Soldier to get through the last bit of damage is, is, is good. I mean, we'll see how it works. It seems like it should be good in this deck, but we'll find out. Uh, okay, so, so now to talk about Exiled Force. Um, I honestly think that if Exiled Force was at 3 in GOAT format... I think Rescue Cat would just be, like, an outright, like, top-tier deck. Um, so, you know, I, I, I want to have Exiled Force a lot. Obviously, like, Sangin, that's one card that searches it. But I decided to play a Reinforcement of the Army to search it as well. And I even considered playing two Reinforcement of the Army. I honestly just think the card is that good. Um, because, it, again, it triggers our last will while doing something extremely productive. Um... But I didn't want to have only one target for reinforcement of the army, so I debated a lot what the second target should be. And I was like, okay, we can do like Big Shield Garda. That's one option. Um, the nice thing about Big Shield Garda is like if you set it turn one and they attack into it, it deals them you know maybe a thousand or eight hundred damage, and sometimes that damage is relevant. Um, another card that I considered, which I'm citing here, is Mystic Swordsman level 2, but I'm like, uh, Mystic Swordsman level 2 isn't, like, you know, good against Warriors, for example, it's not good against Reasoning Gate, um, and then I was like, okay, if we just kind of want, like, a generic, like, good card, we can do DD Warrior Lady, and that's what I had for a while, when I was building this deck list, at one point I literally had written on my deck list, insert Warrior here, because I knew I wanted a second Warrior, then I was like, okay, probably DD Warrior Lady is like just the all around best card. But then I thought about it a little more, and I'm like, DD Assailant is probably like. In the scenarios where DD Warrior Lady is good, Assailant's probably gonna be just as good, and sometimes will be better. Um, so I guess Warriors, again, like 1600 is a pretty relevant stat. Like, it attacks over 1600 Blade Knight, which Warrior Lady can't do. It attacks over Tribe, which Warrior Lady can't do. Um, and then it attacks over, like, a Spent Breaker, which Warrior Lady can't do. And then, of course, I also observed, like, you know, it's probably not going to come up a lot, but it could come up that, like, Milus Radiant pumping DD Assailant to 2200 is relevant. Um, 
you know, say for example, I don't know, our opponent has a Chaos Sorcerer in defense. We have like Milus Radiant in our graveyard because we got it with Rescue Cat, and we have something like Reinforcing the Army Premature Burial. You know, we can reinforce the army for DD Assailant, Premature Burial, or Milus Radiant Attack Over. And I'm not saying it's going to come up a lot, but it's like I want to try it to see how much it does come up. Because if it comes up a lot, then we've like stumbled onto something really big. Uh, you know, most of the spells listed here at first are pretty standard. Obviously, we have heavy three true nades. That's like super important. Uh, wasn't sure if we needed the MST or not, but I figured, you know, MST is a good card, so why not? Uh, you know, last will pre and staples. For our stall, we have two level limits. Um, I like level limit better than gravity bind for a couple of reasons. Really, three reasons. One, level limit isn't a trap, so it doesn't get negated by Decree, which is a very popular main deck card right now. You'll see we're not playing very many traps. Uh, secondly, level limit kills Berserk Gorilla for free, which is another card that a lot of people are maining. Not a lot, but some people are maining three of. So if my opponent goes Berserk Gorilla pass, I will feel thrilled if I just get to go, yeah, activate level limit, kill your guy. Um... And then the third reason, which is kind of a minor reason, uh, if my opponent has, like, Breaker or Mobius, you know, yeah, they'll get to kill our level limit, but at least it'll get switched to defense for a turn. Uh, and then, yeah, and then our second, like, stall card is Scapegoat. And one of the things, like, sort of one of the fundamentals of building combo decks in general is any card that doubles as both like a stall card and a combo piece um happens to be really good in combo so um i'll give you an example right obviously we know that like scapegoat is good in reasoning gate right because oh it it blocks hits and we can use the tokens as fuel for like monster gate and metamorphosis um and i don't know there, there are other com there, there are other examples as well um even like in Frog FTK, a lot of the monsters like Swap, Frog, and Substitute were both combo pieces and could help you buy yourself some time. So I figured, you know, we can basically do the same thing here because obviously Scapegoat buys us time and it's a beast and it's a warrior. So it gets pumped by Milus Radiant. So like Scapegoat plus Milus Radiant is 2,800 damage. Um, and then we also are playing United We Stand, which, like, comp, you know, it works for our standard Rescue Cat combo, but it also works with Scapegoat. And then I'm also playing one Big March of the Animals, which is, in a way, kind of like a second United We Stand. Um, you know, very similar. So, like, if you have Scapegoat, Milus Radiant, plus Big March of the Animals, that three-card combo is 7,800 damage. Um, and I even considered, like, leaning into this even harder by playing, like, three Scapegoat and two Big March of the Animals instead of double Jar Greed. We'll see how it works out. Um, Snatch Deal, you know, standard card. Uh, traps. I, I didn't want to play too many Traps. I mean, one, because a lot of people are playing World Decree. Um, that's not really the main reason, though, because we have plenty of ways in this deck to deal with World Decree. Um... Primarily, I just didn't think there were a lot of traps that, like, help our combo that much. Like, obviously, the, the most common one to main deck is uh, Ojama Trio, right? Because it's good with Panda. Um, but for me, it's like Ojama Trio is good with Panda by itself, but it doesn't really help you OTK with Rescue Cat. So if I was playing like more of an aggro burn list with Panda, I would definitely want the Ojama Trios. But since it doesn't help us kill our opponent most of the time, I feel like why would we play this? Um, so yeah, so it's just kind of like, uh, don't see any traps helping me too much. Other traps that I considered, uh, one was Raigeki Break, especially with Double Wicked Worm Beast. I feel like Raigeki Break could be good in this deck. Um, I also considered Nightmare Wheel, just because, like, it can keep a, like, Set Magician of Faith locked down while also burning out our opponent. And obviously you can do it on, you know, whatever, a Blade Knight that's attacking you as well. Uh, th thanks, thanks, thanks to everyone who, who subbed. 
And and to the people who um you know sub on Twitch, I do do the deal where uh you know if if you want, I'll play your deck or give you deck advice or whatever it is. That's for any of the any of the things where you're sending me money, right? I will happily give you good advice in exchange. So yeah, so I just didn't feel like there were a lot of shops we wanted to play in this deck, so decided not to really play any. Uh, Mirror and Trenchel, obviously good cards, so is Ring. Jar, it's like, eh, didn't know. It, Jar's just kind of filler. Uh, not too much to talk about in the side deck. Obviously, I did bring up Ojaba Trio. I figured, there's like, first of all, there's a couple of things that this deck doesn't deal with very well. And luckily, the good news is that neither of them are played very much anymore. And those two things are Thousand Eyes Restrict and King Tiger Wango. So when I was building this deck, like both the mid and the side, I was trying to come up with like, okay, like what outs can we play for those? So that was like one of the reasons that I considered Raigeki Break in the main, for example, is because it outs those two cards. And thanks for following, Brant. Um, so... Looking this side, I was like, oh, we want some outs for those. I mean, to some extent, we just kind of hope people don't play them. Like, King Tiger Wangu in general, yeah, there's some decks that side it. Like, Warriors side it sometimes. Monarchs side it sometimes. Uh, but we can just kind of hope that we just have one of our few outs. Uh, but one thing that I figured I might want for, like, a Warrior deck in particular that sides in Wangu's is, like, Ojama Trio plus Needle Ceiling. Um, so the Ojama Trio, the reason why I like it against Warriors is just because it means they can only be attacking us with a max of two monsters at once. So, um, I was like, okay. And then I figured, like, Needle Ceiling should also be pretty good against them, right? Um, even versus, like, King Tiger Wangu, we can do things like, they have, like, I don't know, say they have, like, a Wangu and a Kaiku in play. We can do something like activate Ojama Trio you know, Wangu triggers, but they'll have, still have five monsters in play before Wangu resolves, and then you can chain Needle Seal and kill all their guys. So, um, Needle Sealing plus Scapegoat, or Needle Sealing plus Ojama Trio, kills a full field of warriors, even if they have, like, a Wangu in play. So, so that's, like, kind of cool. Um, I don't know, it's side to side cross out, because I figure, like, I don't know, against these T-Drag decks, we probably want that. Duo anti combo vortex is just again outs like Wangu's and Thousand Eyes. Uh, I already brought up Death Wombat. I was considering maining this. One of the advantages to maining it is it frees up a side deck slot. Uh, Dark Possessed Soul. This is a card that I have no idea is good, but it seems like it could be good. And the reason why is because again, like we kind of want a lot of ways to trigger our last will. Um, and Dark Possessed Soul could be a way to do that. Um, so I don't know, against maybe sort of like a standardish goat control deck, we could side this in instead of Cannon Soldier. So yeah, like I said, there's kind of like a lot to talk about, because there's just like a lot of different synergies going on here. Um, I'm not sure if the side deck is very good, to be honest. I think this deck has like a lot of side deck choices. Um, obviously, like we also get to play... Cypher Soldier, we can search it with Last Will, and it's an Earth, so it gets pumped by Milus Radiant. Uh, but yeah, there's like a lot of other things I was considering. Um, as far as cards I was considering in either the main or the side that I decided not to play, uh, one is actually Bizer Shock. So I'll bring that up here. And the cool thing about this is that it's a Last Will target, and it's like basically a giant Trunade. So the fact that you could like essentially last will for a giant trunade is pretty sick in theory the problem is that like in the current meta i feel like just way too many back rows are chainable so i don't want to have to go like last will rescue cat get bizer shock bounce all your things oh now they chained raigeki break and i can't kill them or now they chained torrential and i can't kill them um so yeah, if the meta was like all like Sakuretsu armors and bottomless trap holes, I actually think you could make the case for main decking this card. But since it's mostly like Raigeki breaks and Book of Moons, um, I think probably not. 
Uh, the other card that I was considering was Iron Blacksmith Kotetsu because we're just like already playing three equips anyways. Right? We got pre snatch and United. So I was like, oh, we could just play Iron Blacksmith. Why not? Um, I mean, the reason that I decided not to is, uh, well, mainly just because, like, the way our deck is now, we can make all of their crossouts and Blade Knights and Mystic Swordsman level 2s not do anything. So I feel like if we're playing this one Kotetsu, we're just kind of asking our opponent to screw us with a Blade Knight or screw us with a crossout. Whereas if we didn't play this, their Blade Knights would be vanillas. And then, um, you know, crossout would just be dead. So, just something to consider. I'm definitely, like, a big fan of this card in general. I mean, I made a video about this card. Um, but, yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I, I couldn't pull the trigger this time. But, in theory, in theory, I think it's it's a good card because everything it searches is pretty strong. Let me do a save as here. So, like, this is what the deck, like, could look like. Um, we could say, screw these guys. You know, play this. Play, like, the second Rota, because why not? Limit reached. Okay. And then we could, like, just, just go, like, full meme here. Just go full meme. I will say, I mean, one thing that I was considering is that March of the Animals is, like, really good in multiples, right? Like, if you have, like, Scapegoat, Milus Radiant, Double March, that's, like, something silly, like, 14,000 points of damage. Um... So yeah, you know what? Let's 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 take this for a spin. Let's take this for a spin. I mean, this has yeah, it's definitely a lot better than Rush Recklessly. This has some advantages. One is, I mean, since we do play Double Rota, we do get our Exiled Force faster, which like against decks that play Thousand Eyes Restrict is definitely important. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I mean, I think. Both lists are probably fine. I mean, one is probably slightly better than the other. Hey guys, just wanted to provide a few more quick thoughts on this deck uh, off stream after playing uh, a few more games. Um, so, so this deck went through a few different versions here and um, mentioned some of the stuff that I liked and didn't like. Uh, Firstly, I I think I did like going, you know, full meme here on playing like the United with the big march of the animals. Um I mean, realize that if you have 5 beasts in play, that big march is I mean, it's literally 5000 damage. So, and you can't activate multiple copies in one turn. So, if you happen to op open something like scapegoat march march, like that's just 10,000, which is well, if you have another beast it's 10,000, which is which is pretty good. Um, and then I will say, you know, for those who are going to go and fix this deck, which I hope people do, I was not very impressed with Amazon Archer. Um, in spite of that, I will say I, I think it was a good suggestion uh, from one of my viewers because I was playing Cannon Soldier before, and I do think this card is better than Cannon Soldier. I just think that neither one is probably good enough for this particular deck. Um, there weren't really any times where I was like, oh, I'm hoping I'll draw Amazonas Archer, or I'm hoping I'll draw a reinforcement to get Amazonas Archer. It was kind of this card that, like, every time I had it, I wished it was something else. And, you know, I like the theory behind being a Rota target that can trigger Last Will. Um, but between Exiled and Three Rescue Cats, it was kind of enough, uh, triggers already. Um... I do like playing at least one reinforcement of the army in order to get our exiled faster. I'm not sure if we need to, and I don't think we need this archer. So, again, to those who are going to go fix this deck, I'd recommend cutting the archer. Um, maybe put in a different warrior here. 
to be like a second target for Rota, or maybe just play one Rota, one Exiled with no other targets, that might be fine too. Um, I think Big Shield Gardener could work actually because... You know, you can set it, and uh, if they attack into it, they take a bit of damage, which makes it a little bit easier to kill them. Yeah, so, I don't know. I mean, try try this deck out. Um, let me know what you think. I liked... Yeah, I think, I think the deck's improving, and I think it can still improve even more. Thanks for watching, guys.